This video is brought to you by Moft. Today we're looking at the first 10 things you should do if you've just got your brand new iPhone 14, uh, 14 Pro, or any iPhone that runs iOS 16. These tips and tricks will help you get the most out of your iPhone's features, battery life, and performance. Also, I am giving away this brand new iPhone 14. If you guys want a chance to win, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and comment your favorite feature of the iPhone 14, along with your Instagram username, and then follow me on Instagram, at Dion Schuddeboom, where I will announce the winner two weeks from now on the 16th of October. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is customize the new lock screen. Now, if you don't already know, iOS 16 completely overhauls the lock screen, and also with that adds a bunch more features for customization. So what we can do is we can press and hold anywhere on the uh, lock screen, and this will bring up a switcher, which will allow you to cycle between any preset uh, lock screen designs that you have. I really like this as this allows you to instantly change the look and feel of your phone uh, and reminds me a little bit of switching the watch faces out on your Apple Watch. Now to add a new lock screen, we're gonna go ahead and press the little plus sign in the bottom right and this will then take us through a bunch of different presets. So we have a bunch of feature designs. Uh, it will even create designs for your photos. You can see it actually crops me out of them and places me in front of the time. This is a really neat touch. Uh, and then looking further down, we have astronomy related uh, wallpapers, emoji, uh, as well as a bunch of different colors. Again, to really match your uh, personality and style. So uh, I kind of like one of these uh, globe ones. So let's go for this middle one here. Go ahead and tap that and uh, right away you can see it's actually found my location now for those that don't know i am based in london in the uk as you can see uh, and this is really cool but we can also uh, go even further by swiping between different options so we can have a whole earth view uh, again we have that slightly more zoomed in view or uh, we could take it to the moon if we like as well uh, and zoom in as well uh, but i like this option the most i think this looks uh, pretty cool now we can also customize this further so we can go ahead and tap on the clock here and uh, we can change the fonts. Now, this is the first time ever uh, you'll be able to have a different font on your lock screen. Of course, Apple have always had that very recognizable font. Uh, in fact, I think that might be this one actually, uh, but I kind of like the more bolder. Uh, you have this like two line design. Uh, and you can also change the color. So you can really personalize it, uh, change the hue, the temperature, uh, again, all to really match your, uh, your style. So uh, let's go ahead and see here. Uh, let's go with uh, let's let's go with this one. I kind of like it very bold uh, and kind of classic and uh, Above that here. We can also display different information. So currently we have the date uh, We have the time for the sunset so we can add and remove things. Uh, I like to keep this plain and simple I like to just have the date and the day and then this is my favorite part and that is the option to add widgets Yes for the first time we can finally have widgets on the lock screen uh, This is a great way to get information at a glance So you can see there's a bunch of presets up here from reminders to calendar uh, And you can go by app and find exactly the widget that you like now as someone who uses an Apple watch uh, I keep track of my activity every day So I like the activity app to show how far I am in terms of my walking and my workout distances uh, that I want to meet each day and secondly I like to have the weather. This is great, uh, especially here in London. We seem to have gone from summer to winter in what seems like a single day. So uh, this way I won't be caught off guard uh, when I'm walking out in shorts and it is eight degrees Celsius. So we'll go ahead and add that. Uh, now, of course we can add more. Of course, we can have up to four in this case. Some will take up uh, two rows and others will take up just one. Uh, but one thing to bear in mind with widgets is to use them sparingly. While they are great to get a lot of information at a glance, they do update and run constantly. So this will take battery. So my suggestion, instead of going for four, uh, maybe go for two to sort of find that happy middle ground. And then once we've customized the uh, new preset, we'll go ahead and select add. And then we have the option to add it as a pair, both through our uh, lock screen as well as our home screen. So we'll go ahead and do that. And as you can see, now in that same switcher menu, we have added the new preset, which we can tap in and here it is, looks great. One of the first things I do with any new phone is get some good accessories. And this is where the snap case, as well as the snap stand and wallet from Moft come in. These products add protection and functionality to your iPhone. The snap phone stand and wallet comes in four beautiful colors to perfectly match your style and the new iPhone 14. The snap phone case is available for all current iPhone 14 models uh, and adds a nice touch of transparency along the sides to really let your phone's color shine through. While the cool white or smoky black back sets a neutral tone. The case features up to five foot drop protection and actually self heals from lighter scratches over time. 
It is also designed to increase the magnetic strength. In fact, it is up to two times stronger uh, compared to the standard MagSafe, and this is especially important uh, for an accessory like a wallet. And better still, it also strengthens the magnets of any other MagSafe compatible products. The wallet accessory not only lets you store up to three cards, it also acts as a stand, perfect to set your phone up at a desk, all the while still having a very thin profile uh, that is comfortable in the hand as well as in the pocket. To learn more about the Snap phone case as well as the Snap stand and wallet, be sure to click the links in the description. A big thank you to Moff for supporting the channel, now back to the iPhone 14. Now the iPhone 14 also introduces some really useful uh, safety features that you're gonna want to make sure are activated. So to do this, we're gonna go into the settings tab and then we're gonna scroll down to where you find emergency SOS. Now the first thing to turn on here is crash detection. Now if you don't already know, crash detection will detect if you're ever in a serious car crash uh, and will then automatically dial emergency services if you do not respond. So my suggestion, definitely turn this on. Another useful feature you may want to turn on is call with five presses. Now on this particular phone, it is grayed out as I don't have a SIM card in there, uh, but normally speaking, you will have the option to turn this on and this will allow you to press the side button, so the sleep wake button, five times rapidly to automatically start a call with emergency services. Uh, you can imagine, for example, having your phone in your pocket uh, and if ever you're in a position where you need to call 911 uh, or any emergency services, you can do this in a very subtle way simply by pressing this button five times right from your pocket. And then on the topic of security, uh, let's go ahead and add some settings to Face ID. So we'll go ahead and tap into Face ID and Passcode. I'm gonna quickly uh, type in my password here. And what we're gonna do is turn on Face ID with a mask. Now masks are still around and being able to unlock your phone whilst wearing a mask is just super useful, uh, especially of course, if you don't already have an Apple Watch. So turning on this setting will allow you to do so. Also, I suggest adding an alternative appearance if you wear glasses, uh, lots of makeup, or frequently change your hairstyle, as this ensures that uh, Face ID will always recognize you. And then finally, on the very bottom are two essential settings, uh, and the first is the allow when locked section. Now, my suggestion is to turn almost everything off here, as realistically speaking, if say your phone were lost or stolen, uh, you wouldn't want anyone without your password uh, or access to your face ID to have access to things like your messages, uh, your wallet, or to return calls, and especially USB accessories. So my suggestion, turn all of these off, perhaps with the exception of the lock screen widgets uh, that we set up just earlier when customizing our lock screen. And then lastly is the erase, the erase data option. Now this is crucial. Uh, if you are prone to forgetting your password, do make sure that you write this down somewhere. Uh, but realistically, most people will use Face ID or Touch ID if you're on an SE. And this here means that if your password is incorrectly typed into the phone 10 times, it will automatically remove all of its data. Now, later on in the video, I'm gonna show you the best way to back up your phone to make sure that your data is always safe. But what this means is if your phone is ever lost or stolen, no one will be able to access your data, which at the end of the day is most important. Now the new iPhone 14s come with some excellent displays. Uh, so let's go ahead and optimize it to make sure we get the most out of it. Now first under the display and brightness setting, we have the option to switch between uh, light and dark mode. Uh, both have their advantages. I like to use night mode, uh, light mode during the day and night mode, well, during the night. So uh, what I suggest doing is turning on the automatic option and this will automatically cycle between the two modes uh, depending on the time of day. So as you can see, between seven and 10 p.m. I have uh, light mode going and then uh, between those other times, we are in dark mode as this makes it just a little bit nicer uh, to look at at night. Whereas during the day, I like to have the bright uh, white backgrounds on the display. Now, secondly, we have your brightness toggle. Now, my suggestion is to rarely use uh, maximum brightness. Uh, in fact, the auto brightness on iPhones is already really great and will only really turn this up if you need to, let's say when you're out in the sun, uh, but otherwise keeping it at around that 50% uh, to 60% range is best for your phone's uh, battery life as well as your display life. Uh, and then beneath that, we have the option for True Tone. Now, True Tone is pretty cool. What True Tone essentially does is it will adjust the temperature of the display to match your surrounding environment. Now, I have uh, studio lights surrounding me now, which are set to daylight, so they'll be slightly on the warmer side. So you can see that when I turn this option on, my screen gets a little bit warmer. The whites are a little bit more yellow slash orangey, uh, whereas if I turn it off, it has more of a bluish tint. 
And basically what this option does is it makes the display even more comfortable to look at uh, during the day, but especially at night. So this is a feature I definitely suggest having on at all times only not when you are editing, as of course this does uh, affect the accuracy and the color reproduction of the display. So if you're editing a video or a text uh, or an image, uh, I do suggest turning this off. Now you can do this in settings, but a quicker way to do this is via the control center. So you can swipe down from the top right corner and then press and hold on the brightness toggle. And here we have the option to turn on and off true tone. And here also we can actually quickly switch uh, between light and dark mode. And beneath that we have Night Shift. Now Night Shift works kind of similar to True Tone, uh, but instead takes it to an even more extreme level. Uh, you can see if I go ahead and turn this on, it makes the screen almost appear orange. Uh, and this is an effort to minimize the amount of blue light that is coming from the display. Now for many people, uh, blue light is not good for your sleep. It can cause headaches and a lot of strain, especially when looking uh, at screens at night. So if you are affected by this, you can set it to be scheduled to turn on in the evenings. Uh, but again, do turn this off when you are editing photos or videos, as again, the color reproduction will not be as accurate uh, as it normally would be. Lastly, there is the raise to wake option. Now, this is something that I like to have on. Uh, this is where if your phone is flat on a table and you pick it up, it will automatically turn on the display. I like to have this on as it just makes it easier and quicker to unlock. But if you are looking to save every bit of battery, uh, you can turn this off. And while we're on the topic of saving battery, uh, these next tips are gonna be really useful. And that has to do with notifications and background app refresh. Now these are two very uh, big factors that definitely contribute to how well or not well your battery life will perform. So starting off with notifications, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start uh, in the settings app here. And what I suggest you do is scroll through all of the applications on your phone and see whether they actually need to be sending you notifications. You can see that for many apps, I've actually turned this off entirely uh, and for many of them as well, I don't allow notifications on the lock screen. This means that when my phone goes off, I know it is something important. In other words, I only want messages, uh, calls, maybe a few shopping apps or for deliveries, uh, and perhaps some banking apps to come into my phone. Otherwise, I don't mind if they just go straight to the notification center where I can swipe down to access them anytime, maybe a couple times throughout the day. And other apps, they just don't need to be sending me notifications. Uh, games, for example, books, uh, apps like this, they have no business wasting my time with useless notifications. Trust me, this is not only good for your battery life, but also for your well-being. And the similar thing can be said for background app refresh. So we're gonna go back, uh, select general, and then we're gonna click on background app refresh. And here again, you can see many of them are off. Now I don't suggest turning this off for all applications uh, like maps applications uh, or certain messaging apps. You may want them to always be up to date in the background, but many other apps just don't need to be running. Uh, I'm thinking particularly about games, uh, shopping apps, grocery apps, anything like that turn it off as the less is running in the background, the less battery you are using. Earlier, we talked about the control center. Now, this is a really useful feature. Uh, again, the control center is what you'll find here in the top right hand of the screen. This allows you to quickly access uh, core system functions and settings without having to go into the settings app uh, or leave whichever app you are using. But there is a way to customize this uh, and really get the most out of it. So to do this, we're gonna go into settings and then select uh, control center. And then first we have the option to either allow it or disallow it to be accessed whilst using other apps. Now, if you are a mobile gamer, say for example, and you often swipe from the edges of your screen uh, and you don't want your screen to be accidentally covered, you may wanna turn this off. Personally, I like to have it on as I do use it quite often. And then beneath that is where we can actually customize the controls that you want shown in the control center. So this upper portion here will show the controls that you currently have, and then we can go ahead and remove them. Let's say we remove the torch, uh, we'll press the little minus button and then we'll select remove. Uh, and then we can also rearrange them by pressing this little three line menu and drag them around. And then beneath that here on the bottom are the additional controls that we can add. So let's say we wanna bring the torch back. We'll go ahead and select the uh, little plus here. It's added it to the bottom of the list. So that's now there on the bottom right corner. Uh, let's say if I want this in the top left, simply move it up and there we go. It's just repositioned back to where it was before. Notification center is super useful. Uh, and once you've narrowed down to only the options that you really use, it'll just be less cluttered 
easier to find what you need and just more useful. One thing you may have seen in the control center is focus modes. Now, if you don't know what this is, uh, last year with the big release of iOS, uh, Apple basically rebranded Do Not Disturb to focus modes and added more options within it. So as you can see, you can now have multiple different uh, focus modes. I'm going to press and hold here to see all the different ones. Uh, and to show you what this does and why to use it, we're going to go ahead and add a new focus mode with a little plus sign here on the bottom. Uh, so we can create a pre set. Uh, let's say mindfulness. I don't have one set up for that yet. So we'll go ahead and customize it. And this is really cool. So whenever you uh, activate the mindfulness focus mode, you can basically allow only certain apps or people to uh, allow to send you notifications. So in other words, perhaps only the most important contacts and the most important apps, the rest you just turn off, allowing you to focus in this case on being mindful uh, for your mental health or whether you are sleeping or working out, whatever the occasion may be, this is a really great feature. And one thing I really love is that this automatically carries over to all of your other Apple devices, whether it be your Apple Watch, your iPad, or even your Mac. So first here, we can go ahead and select on people, and then we can customize and add specific people. So let's say I can add this one person here. Uh, we'll go ahead and press done. And this means that I will only allow notifications from that specific person. Now, secondly, we have a menu that's separate for calls, so we can still choose to allow everybody uh, specific groups on your contact list that you may have made, uh, as well as only your favorites. And the same exact same thing can be done for apps. So we can go ahead and add custom apps. So let's say uh, alarms. I want to keep my alarms going. Go ahead and press done. This way, regardless of the focus mode that I'm in, uh, the alarm will still come in. And then we also have the option to allow for time sensitive notifications. This is something you may want to turn on or off. Again, this will depend on the focus mode and what kind of notifications uh, you want coming in. Now, beneath that here, we have the option also to add a schedule. So we can also have it automatically turn off at a specific, uh, turn on or off at a specific time of day. So let's say you do your, uh, your, your yoga or your mindfulness uh, at a specific time of day, have it set automatically from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. It will turn on and off without you having to do anything. And then with this new focus mode, we can go ahead and activate it manually by just going into the notification center, press and holding on focus. We're gonna select mindfulness as that's the new one we just created. And then as you can see, we'll have this little icon in the top left uh, or top right here in the notification center uh, to show that we've activated this focus mode. And to turn it off, simply press it again and then we're back to normal. One of the upgrades that we get with the iPhone 14 uh, as well as the 14 Pro and Pro Max is action mode. Now in the camera app, if you now swipe to the uh, video section, we have this new little icon here in the top left and this will activate action mode. Now, as you can see, this will automatically switch us to the uh, ultra wide lens and will create an extra stable shot. Now I've talked more about the uh, quality and the impact of this uh, in my full review of the iPhone 14, which I will leave linked in the description, but my suggestion when using this mode is to actually switch back to the main lens. Now, as you can see, it does crop in quite significantly, but the main lens is much better than the ultra wide lens on the iPhone 14, uh, as well as on the Pro and Pro Max, as it is more detailed, sharper, and especially on the Pro and Pro Max actually has a higher megapixel count, which will ultimately result in a better looking image. So my suggestion, if you were to use the action mode, which I think if you're running or if you're trying to get some gimbal style shots is a really nice mode to have, do make sure you switch back to that main lens uh, rather than the uh, ultra wide lens that Apple automatically will select. And this brings us back to one of the first tips uh, that we talked about in this video, and that is to erase the data after 10 failed attempts uh, of typing in the wrong password. Now, the reason you wouldn't have to worry about this is as long as you have a backup. Now, the best way to back up your phone is through iCloud. Now, to do this is to tap on your name in the top of the settings app, and then we're gonna click on iCloud and then we have the option here for iCloud backup. Now, chances are you will have to pay for some extra storage as iCloud only offers five gigabytes for free, way too little by the way, but I do still think it is worth paying for that extra storage. I believe it is only $1 for 50 gigabytes uh, or around $2 for 200 gigabytes, and this will be enough to back up your phone automatically every night. Believe me, this is worth it if ever your phone is lost broken or stolen, your data is always safe. And then when you get a new phone, you can just start right from where you left off without having to worry about anything being lost or having to reset everything. Everything will be safe and you can just smoothly move on uh, as if nothing happened to your phone. Again, this is definitely worth paying for uh, more than any of other Apple services, in my opinion, at least. iCloud is really, really great.
All right, so those are 10 things that I do to any new iPhone, uh, including the iPhone 14 to maximize its features, performance, as well as the battery life. Let me know if this video helped you out. And if you have any tips that I didn't mention today, uh, please leave them in the comments. I'm always curious to hear your thoughts. And if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out my full iPhone 14 full review video, as well as my iPhone 14 Pro review video coming very soon. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.